Our first guest tonight is an Emmy and Grammy winning performer and along with Donald Trump, one of only a handful of guests we've had on this show who've been investigated by the Department of Justice. Her new movie is called Cursed Friends. It premieres October 8th on Comedy Central. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. Yeah. You look beautiful, you look great. How are you feeling? What? I love you more. Now look, let's not BS the audience. I'm here as usual because a more famous person fell out. But get this, <laughs> fell it was out. that Chris Pine who Harry Styles spit on. <laughs> so he doesn't want to be here and get this one, you know, give him the questions. Yeah, you're filling in for Chris Pine. Yes, yeah. but here's the thing. The reason you called me is you know, I've been spit on my whole career. And I actually was even spit on once by Harry Styles. No. And I'm here, yes. You were spit on by Harry Styles? I asked him to, I asked him to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you know what I have to say? I think there's no greater compliment to a guest than the idea that we know you're ready at all times. You're That's like right. a gunslinger. You're like, you know, you're like a box of spaghetti in the cabinet, and right. you're like, it's always good. It's always good. You gotta remember, from me, there's no higher compliment than a box of spaghetti. Yeah. All right, let me explain my voice. Okay, so yeah. last time I was here, just really quickly, I had lung cancer. They took out half my left lung, and so my voice got some damage. But my, I'm fine, it doesn't hurt. And the important thing is my boobs are still fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> that is what's most important. <laughs> How will your, um, eventually your vocal cords stretch out and relax and then your voice will deepen again? I think it'll get back to normal, but I'm not yeah. sure I'm still working. It's funnier it. this way. I'm gonna I be honest with you. Because I think I sound non-threatening and demure. Yeah. That's my new angle. Thank God you're a comedian yeah. and not like a police officer or something. Yeah. Stop, cut it out, you guys. <laughs> be nicer. Now, uh, I don't know if you heard, President Biden on Sunday night said the pandemic is over, so I wonder if that means you are back to, like, fully uh, hobnobbing with your uh, el glamorous and elegant friends. Okay, let me just tell you the backstory. So Jimmy Kimmel is bitter, and he's upset with me, which is the real reason I'm here. No, no hear me out, people, because they get me in a way you never have. Okay, so... <laughs> So, Jimmy made a pact with his good friend Howard Stern 20 years ago that neither one of them would ever come to my house for a party, implying yes. yeah. that I would be the type of person that would put it in my act. Now, in fairness to Howard, Howard made a pact that he would never go to anyone's house ever for dinner, not yeah, just you. That's true. But, that's yes, true. because what I realized yeah. is, and it didn't take me long to figure this out, is every time you, you go to your house, you become, like, part of the show. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, I don't want to be part of the show. I don't want you reporting on my... Well, the cheese stands alone. Okay, so get this, you guys. <laughs> I've been having these dinner parties, and now that I'm, like, sort of canceled, but I'm, like, sort of coming back, everybody knows... Eh, eh. But, but everybody knows that, like, I don't, I'm not going to, like, ask anybody for anything. Like, those days are over. So I have these, like, salons, and they're 10 person sit down, it's lunch or dinner, and it's catered, but I have strict rules. No cross-talking. It's one conversation at a time. No phones. You leave them at the door. If your kids are sick, they'll be fine. And, and so I like to invite, like, unique people. So the last one I had, have you guys seen that guy from January 6th, Mike Fanone? He's the hero cop, and he had, like, had a heart attack while they were beating him up and stuff. Yeah, he was attacked. Yes, yeah. and also he's super sexy. So all my single girlfriends <laughs> and my gays, they all want him. The ladies and the gays. Uh-huh. And so, <laughs> yes. I think the men like him, too. Yeah. The men like him, too, yes. And he came over in, like, a muscle car. Like, he's very way straighter than you. Like, he's very... You know what I mean? But that's sure. what I love about it. That's why we're Who friends. Who isn't really? Yeah. Well, all right. So then, this is like a normal guy, right? Like, he doesn't really watch Dick TV in that much. And he probably watches sports. But, um, because apparently some people do. But anyway, um, so... I was trying to think, like, who could just give this guy a laugh? He's been through so much, testifying before the committee. So I call him and I go, look, my life is so short on heterosexual men that every so often I have to field it out 
to one of my subcontractors. And I was like, is this Minnie Mouse calling me? Who is this? <laughs> so I didn't know you were like on a lavish vacation. And I'm like, look, I need you to send a straight to the house by six. And he's like, parameters? And I go, they have to be a guy that this guy but like a J6 cop would get along with. Yeah. So he sends Andy Richter and Joel McHale. Now, don't disrespect. Like a normal guy isn't gonna know them. And what? I, I thought you were gonna send Tom Cruise. <laughs> yes, I thought you were gonna send Maverick. Everybody loves Maverick. That's what you were thinking? I, yes. No, I, thought, I was like, who's a nice guy who would be into like interested in this? I thought Andy Tom Richter. Tom Cruise. Joel McHale, and Cruise. who else did I say? George Someone Lopez. I said George Lopez. Anyone from Maverick. Yeah. All right. So this now, is so pre-Top Gun, so yeah, I didn't so then, know. I know. So then you you said Lopez. I said, perfect. Everybody knows George Lopez. So I call Lopez, and then he's in, but then he has to cancel the day of. So I replaced him with Rosie O'Donnell. Hear me out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> While not a male heterosexual, <laughs> she can hang. <laughs> like, this is why I don't come to your house, I, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so those two got on great. Uh -huh. And it started out, because he, like, when Rosie hadn't arrived, they go, look, Rosie O'Donnell was coming over, and she's gay, and I don't want you to accidentally say some homophobic crap. And he goes like this. He was shaking. And he goes, I have a gay friend. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But this is what you said to this man? Yes. <laughs> he man, warned him. That's if he hasn't been through enough. <laughs> and then the one I had after that, Monica Lewinsky. Oh, she was at the party. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, now you're having regrets. All right, so. I think this is very interesting, this, this, this party thing. But I like to thing. do because it it's like, I put her with a bunch of, like, really smart people and journalists, and we were... Like, so believe it or not, she has a lot of friends in that field. And I did ask her, because she's lovely and like really easy going and fun and funny. She was like a dream. But you know, she has like an issue to deal with everywhere she goes. She's very recognizable and stuff. And at first she was talking about wanting to go out with a hot cop. And I was like, hold on, that's a whole other matchmaking business. Yeah. But I might be open to it. Yeah. And so then I said, look, Mon, I said, <laughs> I said, it's okay if I ask you this, and if you don't want to answer, fine. I said, but I'm dying to know. Were you able to bring yourself to vote for Hillary Clinton in 2016? And I said, have you been ever been asked? She said, no. So anyway, um, she did. She oh, said, yeah. I couldn't let my own issues get in the way. I couldn't be a vote for Trump. So yes, of course, I voted for Hillary. Wow, that's a big scoop. <laughs> that would have been a great campaign ad. <laughs> By the way. Uh, wasn't enough, turns out. Yeah, yeah wasn't enough. We yeah. tried, we tried. <laughs> We're gonna yeah. take a break. When we come back, we'll see a clip from your new movie. And uh, I have a couple more questions about these salons that you're uh, holding. Kathy Griffin is with us. We'll be right back. Wayne, I say we peace out of this video. <laughs> Chillax, homies. Welcome to my crib. Sorry to say I'm fresh out of sweets. Th that's okay. We should probably get back to my house anyway. Yeah. No, yeah. no. <laughs> I can't let you leave empty-handed. Not a group like this. So sweet. So innocent. So close. I know. How about a book? <gasps> that is Kathy Griffin in Cursed Friends, which premieres uh, next month on Comedy Central. Yes. Uh, is it a scary? Is it scary, funny, it's, it's or a comedy? It's actually kind of like a Sharknado, where it's like kind of making fun of like the Stranger Things uh, and that vibe. But I did, you know, I don't work with kids, so I didn't know what the hell to talk. You never about. worked with kids before. I don't even know kids, and so <laughs> I just panicked and I just, I'd be like, "What drugs do kids like?" Like I don't know, because I hear they do, they like the bath salts and vaping. What about when you go to like, um, like the Kardashians' house? Are you still going to their th they how, home? Kept me in trouble. Oh, yes. Do they have I'm their kids around at the house and do you interact with the kids? They're like ATM machines. We just like we press a number and money comes and out. And money comes out of the kids. Yeah. Wow, that's They're great. They're all like that. Like, <laughs> no, I love going. And because like, this is honest, like when I was like it went through my skin to a Trump and all that, I couldn't like nobody would take me in anywhere. So I will tell you this, I didn't know you I didn't know I was gonna say this. Okay. When nobody would just even have me over for Thanksgiving, this guy did. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the Kardashians had you. <laughs> they did. So then, 
he took me, he took a shift, he took me for Thanksgiving, and they took me for Christmas. So <laughs> I'll always love them for like reaching out when like nobody. And so I go, and you know, I don't want to get in trouble, but you get the swag bag is to die Do for. Do you really? Yes. Okay, first of all, oh, the I bad didn't part give is that. they gave you those horrible shoes that the ex husband makes. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like, they're like clumped. They're clumpy and they're like Crocs with sneakers. They're, they're worth awful. like a zillion dollars. Those yes, shoes. apparently. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then the wife, the wife gives you the products. So Who's the like, wife? Kim. Oh, Kim. So the okay. wife gives you like the skins <laughs> and what have you. And then the mom is more normal, so she'll give you like a Burberry present. You know what I mean? But I just got a big box from the freaking daughter. Uh, What's her real name? Not Francine. North? No, the one to uh, mix the makeup in the lips. Kylie. Kylie. Okay. Kylie. Oh. So Ky I used to call them Francine. Wait, how is Kim the mom and Kylie's the daughter? That's. Well, because it's all about. Okay. Okay, Here's I get You're going to make me a chart. Will you make me a chart? Yes. After? The head is Chris. Uh huh. Don't get it twisted. Right. So the ultimate mom is going to be Chris. So Kim is the mom of, yes, North, Saint, Milwaukee, and I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. American cities, American cities for 500. But the daughter, the daughter sent a big box of her makeup. And get this, one time the mom came over to my house and she goes, tonight, do you know what I have to tell Kimberly? And I go, that she's a rich and famous? And she goes, I have to tell her that Kylie is a billionaire with a B and Kim is still just a millionaire. <laughs> and I said, this? is like the G8 summit. <laughs> this is, we should do this at the United Nations. She had to tell her that, yes. huh? So I, I love them. And then I drag my poor husband there, and he's very shy and introverted. Oh, yeah, what's he doing okay. there? Oh, this is great. He hates it. I mean, he doesn't hate it, but he's, he always says to me, he goes, Kathy, please don't talk to Caitlin. She hates you. And I'm like, well, let's see what happens. But anyway, um, and so, and so, you know, there's always like a guy in the doghouse. Because every time you go, somebody's cheated on somebody. Oh, yeah. But they still multiply. They multiply. And so, because it's always a spin off. The kids are more spin offs. Mm -hmm. And so then, the, you know, you probably know who it is because he plays sports Tristan Thomas. Thompson. Whatever. Yeah. All right, so. Have you talked to him about Chloe or not? Uh, no, I can't say that I Jimmy. have talked to him about Chloe. Jimmy. Well, I, I just love that Chloe, and I just think he's been horrible. <laughs> so we go to the party, and Chloe looks like a million bucks. She's got that revenge body. And then Tristan, they're all icing him out. And I want to be on their side. Screw him. So I'm like, oh, isn't he terrible? What's his name? Then he doesn't know what to do. And so I see he drifts over to my husband, and they just stand there. So they, like, gravitate to my poor husband, who's just, like, a nice guy that won't, like, really say much. Yeah. He's just yeah. Kind of like, I don't want trouble. But they were like great friends by the end of the party. <laughs> well, <laughs> and of course, all right, so husband, everybody found yes, somebody. Is he's what a you're giant saying. Basketball fan. All right. Well, it's very good to see it's you. I to hope see to see you, you again very guys. soon. Kathy Griffin. Curse and Friends premieres Saturday, October 8th on Comedy Central. We'll be back with Chad and JT.